Today I'm going to go through the first CSWA practice problem. Um, the first thing you should do when you start any CSWA problem is look at the unit system, the part origin, and the material of the part that you're going to be modeling. Um, in this example, the unit system is millimeter gram second, so I go down here and I change that. So that's correct. My material is AISI 1020 steel, so I can right click on the material, edit material, go under steels, and I can find my AISI 1020. Make sure to click apply and then close, and you'll see now instead of material not specified, it says the actual material. Um, decimal places two, that'll come into effect when we get into our measurement of the mass of our overall part. So for this part, I'm going to start off by selecting a plane and creating a two-dimensional sketch on that plane. And I'm going to sketch the contour that I want to extrude to make this shape. So it's important to notice that the, um, the origin for this problem is not critical. It's not, um, it says arbitrary, right? So it doesn't, doesn't necessarily matter for this, for this project. So I'm doing a rough outline, trimmy poo, come up here, draw this little slot up here. So I recognize that I could capture this entire contour with, with one sketch. This is going to be the, the fastest way to complete this and uh, also um, cap the least amount of features. So this is dimension A, dimension A is 50, dimension B, ooh, this is supposed to be 70. There we go. So this slot, 12.5, slot width. Three point three slot depth twenty nine. When I click this, you see that it gives me the radius, and in my example, it gives me the diameter. So I can type in my diameter and then divide it by two, and that will be the correct uh, radius there. The center point of this circle is twenty seven from the bottom, as well as twenty seven from this side edge. Um, this slot here, let's define the width of this. Smart dimension 19. And I'm still blue because this slot can, can vary, right? So what I want to do is I want to center this um, about the center here. So a couple different ways I could do that. One way is I could select both of these lines. Um, as so, both of these lines make those equal, and now that makes it fully defined. Another way you could do it is you can make a, uh, a center line from the center of the circle horizontally over, right? And then I could physically dimension from here to here and from there to there equal. Or I can select the center line, click these two opposite lines, and say symmetric. So um, there's probably other methods as well, but any, any method you can do to make that centered is the way you want to do that. Features, extrude boss space. This should be extruded by 67 millimeters. Hit the check. And there's my basic shape. So, um, so I have some grooves I need to cut into this um, bore. I have a little X feature on the back side I need to do. And then on the top I have a hole. And then I'll be done with this part. So let's start by sketching on this back side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this entire surface and convert entities. Maybe you'll see why I do that um, here. And then I'm going to kind of draw, draw an X here. Make Notice the parallel um, constraint that's added. And then let's draw like this. Again, noticing the parallel constraint. That's important. I'm going to trim out the center. And I'm going to also trim out the sides. So now I'm left with a closed shape, and I just need to add some dimensions on this to make this defined. So this dimension is 9.6. Smart dimension from here to here is 9.6. Okay. Um, the distance from the corner to one of these legs, notice how that dimension is being placed. That is 4.8. Interesting. Let's undo. Let's 
just get that a little bit closer from there to there. From the corner to this line is 4.8. There we go. That's a little bit better. Um, I want to bring this up. I want to do the same thing over here. So from this line to this corner is, it's not what I wanted. From the corner to the line, 4.8. You see that after I add that, it starts to become fully defined. So from this corner to this line, 4.8. So let's go down here. From this corner to this line is 4.8. Cool. I'm fully defined. I have a closed shape. I'm ready to do my cut extrude. So cut extrude goes from the sketch plane going in. That total uh, depth of cut is 1.5 millimeters. Selected contours, I can select it there. That gives me my, my shape that I want. Hit the check, and there is my X. Next, I'm going to click this top surface. I'm going to sketch, sketch. I'm just going to select a draw a, a, a hole, which is going to be 6.3 millimeters in diameter. Located from this edge is 8.3. Located from this edge is 33.5. Fully defined. Now I'm going to go features, extrude cut. And I could just kind of drag this down until I see that it goes through. That would be fine. The thing that I like to do here is I like to say up to next, which brings that hole up to the next surface, which is inside of that slot. So hit the check and I'm done with that. Okay, the last step is I need to cut the grooves in, in this part. So um, many different ways to do this, like anything. Um, I could have used the whole wizard here on the top. I chose to use a cut extrude, thought it was easier in this example. Um, to do the slots, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this surface, sketch, sketch, and I'm going to sketch a circle concentric to my existing bore, and that has a dimension of 40. So once I have that closed shape, I can go extrude cut. And now, instead of from sketch plane, I can say offset. The distance I want to offset this is 12.5. You notice it went the wrong way. So I can flip that around, and then my the distance I want to actually do the extrude is 1.5 and it's actually going the wrong way as well because if you look at your problem statement it should be coming back. So change some directions around there. Again this is an offset cut extrude and that creates that groove in the part right there. For the next one I'm going to use the same sketch, that same circle that's buried under cut extrude 3. It's called sketch 4. I'm going to do another extrude cut Again, offset. My distance here is going to be, I'm going to do a little math here in my 12.5 plus 42. Again, going the wrong way. Let's go that way. And this one, this time, I want to go that direction. So the arrow is correct. I don't need to flip this around. I hit the check, and I'm done. Um, Again, this problem is saying, what is the overall mass in the part in pounds, or sorry, in grams? So I can go to evaluate mass properties. With that, you notice that there's two decimal places. If you need to change the decimal places, what you can do is go options, use custom settings, uh, decimal places right here. So if I needed three decimal places, I could click OK, and that would give me the answer to the third decimal place. And that concludes uh, this example. Thank you for watching.